When I first picked up Far Cry 3, I was hesitating to dive into it, because when I start playing a franchise, I start with the first game. But the fact that the first and the second Far Cry were not on sale, game stories not being tied together, and my dear friend Foil Cried Shadows wanting to see me playing it, made me give in and play it for the first time on stream. I'm streaming my playthroughs over at twitch.tv slash artad1, where you can watch the whole playthrough with commentary and human interaction. I play many different games and here are some examples that you can expect in the future, as well as other Far Cry games, so be sure to follow to be the first one to experience them with me. So the whole plot of Far Cry 3 could be summarized as vacation trip gone wrong, gone sexual. You, Jason Brody and a bunch of your friends decided to go skydiving, but didn't choose the location wisely and ended up in the hands of pirates slash drug dealers slash slave traders, with the infamous Vaz at the head of it all. Or is he? Long story short, you free yourself, stealth your way out of the camp, and as soon as you think freedom is near, your brother gets killed and Vaz, being the generous man he is, gives you time to run away, and once you pass the world's most trustworthy bridge, you are being rescued by a mysterious hand. That actually is an entire man called Dennis. <laughs> I am Dennis. He took you to the friendly village of locals that call themselves Rakyat, and apparently they are warriors that use tattoos called Tataos to empower themselves. Once the friendly neighbor Dennis finishes applying the tatao on you, you are officially on the quest of finding and rescuing your friends, as well as maybe putting Vaz's tyranny to an end. Now that we are out in the open, it's time to look around and see what awaits us. First of all, the majority of gameplay consists of taking radio towers to reveal parts of the map, and taking outposts to unlock fast travel points as well as side quests. Straight up want to say that uh, the gameplay feels very repetitive. Taking towers and outposts is all there is, mixed up with 4 types of side quests. Hunting, where you are tasked with killing animals with a given weapon. Bounty, where you have to find a certain person and kill them with a knife, and that's the case for all of them by the way. Supply delivery, which is basically a race against time on a rough terrain. And miscellaneous, that actually resemble a quest with somewhat of a story. Note that hunting and bounty quests take about 60% of all side quests, where remaining 30% are on supply deliveries and 10% are on miscellaneous quests, which doesn't help the repetitive gameplay. Unless you enjoy the pure action the game provides you with, you can get bored very fast, considering there are 18 towers and 34 outposts, which barely differ from one another. On the other hand, you might want to take over as many outposts as you can to get those sweet fast travel spots, because the mountainous terrain felt very annoying and slippery. You barely can climb and running around takes uh, time and might result in stumbling upon even more hills you can't climb over. I didn't climb all the way here just to give up. Oh, and I completely forgot to talk about the first thing you actually see in the game, the UI. The font is weird. I don't like how the background animation is forced on the post screen instead of a simple gameplay blurring, and the most irritating thing is that you have to press escape to see crafting, inventory, collectibles and such. Only the map could be accessed via hotkey. Speaking about the map, to me personally it felt confusing, hard to distinguish mountains considering the amount of them. Cave entrances are not present on the big map, you only see them on the minimap and once you are close enough. Another thing is the fact that literally every single loot chest is marked on the map, making it flooded with icons that bear no value, considering the best things you can find in loot chests are ammo, money and expensive trash to sell. You can also add to that the absence of ability to uncheck all icons in the filter with one button, so you can check back with the things you actually want to see. You'd have to manually uncheck everything and there is just too much stuff to not have the set button. And yeah, if the loot is underground there is no indication. This, combined with no cave entrances marked, makes it difficult to locate this loot. Speaking of loot chests, the absolute amount of them combined with looting corpses of the enemies makes it very easy to get the best gear fast. Just 3 hours into the game I was able to get the best rifle and my wallet was uh, full like 80% of the time. Oh, my wallet is full, shit, okay. Even when I upgraded it to the fullest extent. The things you can spend money on are kinda limited. You can buy guns, ammo and maps to reveal loot spots, but once you get your favorite guns, and you can only carry 4 at a time, and all the maps, there is nothing to spend money on, except body armor, cause ammo could be easily found on corpses. Maybe I'd like to buy all the guns and strap them with all the possible attachments, but there is no way of applying more than 2 of them, which is disappointing. 
Usually there's no point in complaining about controls, since you can reconfigure them anytime. But the one thing you can't change about controls in this game is holding button for interactions. To interact with literally anything in the game you have to hold the button and it feels awkward. Another thing that felt awkward is climbing. Jason doesn't stick to surfaces to simulate smooth parkour. Instead, you can only grab an edge if it has those ropes on it, and you have a prompt to press space to climb, otherwise you won't grapple even on a climbable edge. Moving on to crafting. You can craft different sized wallets, ransacks and slots for your weapons, capped at 4. And it's pretty simple, but I felt like the amount of different syringes you can craft is overwhelming and completely unnecessary, not to mention a crappy UI. The whole game could be done with just a healing syringe. Probably the last thing I didn't like is that the world feels empty. Outposts are pretty small, outside of them it's just jungles and they are not even that dense. People look the same and loop through the same lines of dialogue in the span of one minute, which breaks the immersion. Now, finally, to the things I actually liked. Characters were pretty good. They all felt alive, the job on the acting was well done, but Lars obviously was the star of the show. I can see why he is considered one of the best villains, but the small amount of screen time he has puts him down for me, so I still think that Handsome Jack is actually the best video game villain. The game is very forgiving. If you die during a quest, you are spawned right in front of your objective, and you don't have to go and take the quest again, which could be extremely annoying. NPC driving instead of you is a recurring theme in the game, and I could only recall just one mission where it's you who actually drives. Some might not appreciate it, but for me it was a pleasant touch. Also, the game has the best fire physics I've seen in any game, it spreads easily and generally looks good, wish we had more fires like that in games. So, in conclusion, I felt like the story was boring up until the couple end quests, the gameplay was boring, and the soundtrack was not the best as well. The game feels overhyped to me, but I guess it's because I didn't play it back in the days, though I really tried to give it a chance and be open-minded. I didn't like the game, but it wasn't terrible. So I give it 6 out of 10. Hopefully future Far Cry series games will be a step up. Ok guys, that was my first game review. Let me know how I did, what should I improve and if you like the series in general. I already recorded footage for the next review that will be on Man of Medan, the first game of the Dark Picture series, so stay tuned for that. If you are new here be sure to subscribe to not miss any future videos and drop some likes or even dislikes, I'm looking to improve my videos so criticism is appreciated. If you like Far Cry or would just like to hang out with me while I experience games for the first time, head over to twitch.tv slash rsad1 and follow me there, I'm streaming 5 days a week, you can check my schedule in the Twitch channel description. But for now I'm signing off, thanks for the watching and have a good day.